What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel to another iRacing video. Today we're doing a GT3 and the VRS GT Sprint Series at Alton Park or as I like to call it Off Track Park. We're starting in the Porsche 911 GT3. Let's hop right into the car. We're about to go green here. Starting the race from P4. There we go. Taking off. And as you're gonna see, I do not have a lot of options. So I just back off a little bit before the corner. Can accelerate super early and get a giga run here on Tommy DeWilder, the Twitch streamer, on the right in the purple Lamborghini. We go side by side into this corner. Still side by side. It's very tight and there is a little contact. It was like typical iRacing netcode thing where the cars just pull towards each other like magnets. And unfortunately, Tommy had to run over the grass there. He did well on not crashing out completely, I have to say, though. So he was still in the race. It sucked a little bit, though, with how his race got uh, sacrificed there with that incident. But it is what it is. These things, unfortunately, do happen from time to time on our racing with a net code, especially when you're racing wheel to wheel this closely like we did there. I guess I could have given him a little bit more space, but he wasn't really mad about it. He immediately knew that that probably was net code and that I didn't do anything crazy there. So anyways, we are in a P3 in this race now, chasing down Nicholson and Awada. And I got Willis Rosenthal, my friends, in P4 right behind. We were on Discord together while doing this race as well. And he was trying to get his 4K finally. I can tell you, he did manage to do so at this point. So, congrats to you, Willis, if you're watching this. But yeah, we were trying to stick with the leaders here. And I have to say, I was quite surprised by how quick they were. In general, I think there's a lot of time to find for me here at Alpha Park still this week. And especially Nicholson was just on another level. Awada, yeah, also a quick driver, but... You know, there is this thing called brake dragging. You might have heard of it lately. As I have a bit of a moment here going through the kink. But it's almost normal if you drive on the limit to have a moment there here and there. You just gotta stay calm and be prepared and, you know, do your best to keep the car, the car steady. And to catch the little slides you have from time to time. But yeah, we were uh, kind of struggling to go the pace of Nicholson and Awada. However, the first lap was a bit worse. I think I warmed up a bit towards the second lap here and felt a bit more comfortable already and it looked like I was closing in a bit again, at least in a water. Half a second the gap from him to Nicholson. A lap later, we can see Awada here going through Druids and he has a massive slide. No idea how he managed to catch that. Definitely not an easy slide. To catch in the Porsche especially, but he did an amazing job doing that. However, it seemed like he was already over driving the car, just pushing too hard in the early phase of the race, getting too much heat into his tires. And that's of course never a good thing in a 40 minute race, even though it's not that long, but yeah, it's, it's just part of racing. You can't just be good on one lap, you have to do more several laps in a row and another huge slide here by Awada and we get a run, can easily pass him. He immediately pulls out of it as well because he knows this is done. There's nothing he can salvage anymore and my friend Willis right on his bumper as well right away. So Awada definitely in a big, big stressful moment there. That was for sure. But yeah, he was just uh, too hard to his tires in the beginning of the race here. It's it's not how it works. And I'm also pretty sure that he was brake dragging in quality because the lap time he did in quality was quite good. But I mean, you can see he's, he's driving like a toaster right now in the early phases of this race. And really throughout the whole thing, you could see that he didn't really have the pace that his quality lap suggested. Overall, I think um, throughout the whole week so far what I've seen a lot of these quick drivers have been brake dragging Which is nice to see and yeah, the few ones that do really get You know Exposed quite hard when the race comes around because the pace difference is 
so big, especially on such a technical track as this. So at this point, we're in a quite comfortable position, knowing that we're probably going to be quicker than Iwata over the whole race here. And, well, the gap in front already was more than two seconds at this point, because Simon Nicholson, holy shit, what a beast on this track. He has some insane pace, I can tell you. And as we jump to the next lap, you can see how insanely close Villas is to the bumper of Iwata, so he's struggling more and more. And yeah, as I said, it's just not how racing works. You gotta be able to do several quick laps in a row and not just one and then drop off like a rock. That's not how it works. Willis already showed himself in Iwata's mirror a bit there, going into that uh, second chicane. However, it's not quite enough yet for him to go by, but I mean, look how close he is. I don't think it's gonna last much longer for Awada to be on that podium holding position there and we're going through through it so you can see the guy in the solar Porsche going super wide onto the grass Willis gets side by side with him into the final corner and this on the inside and manages to pass him easy overtake for the Latvian donkey master so yeah that was Going quite well for us, I have to say, apart from Nicholson just running away. And then, kind of a boring race until the end. Lap 24, and you can see that purple Lambo with Tommy the Wilder. He has been doing an amazing job since he got pushed off there by the netcode in the incident we had with him. And he's catched back up to us. He has some insane pace here as well. If there is anyone in this race that had the abilities to keep up with Nicholson, who at that point was nearly 10 seconds ahead of us, then it definitely would have been Tommy. So yeah, very, very stunning pace. And we had two more laps to go, including this one. And he was super close to us. So I was under pressure big time. But at the same time, on a track like Open Park, that's actually quite a chilled situation as well. Of course, if you make a mistake, you're done, but you just gotta not make one and you're fine, you know, it's easier said than done, I know, I know, but I think I'm quite good at that, even though I run a bit wide here, so Tommy might be able to get a run, but he's not quite close enough, I think, nope, that's not gonna be enough for him to send it into the second chicane, so that maybe was a little bit lucky, but it also wasn't a uh, major mistake that I made there, but yeah, he's so close. It's definitely a lot of pressure on me. If I make a tiny mistake, it's done. But without a mistake, it's nearly impossible to overtake unless you have like a major pace advantage. And he was a lot quicker than me, but not much enough or not enough to actually be able to just drive past me here. So yeah, I was uh, I was basically aware of that. I could see the could see the marshal on the pit wall waving the white flag there. So we're on the final lap now here at Alton Park. I think I was quite fine in terms of off track management as well in this race. So I could afford to take one or maybe two if I really needed to, but I didn't really feel the need because I knew I got this in the bag. I can do this. Just need to focus on the apexes, on the corners, on the braking zones and do my thing, you know, and I will be fine going a bit deep, just slightly into the hairpin here but that was not enough either for Tommy to really get into a good attacking position here one final time through this very tricky first chicane here I think it's called Britain's, right? Uh, yeah, not easy, especially with that harsh curb on the, on the left-hander that you have to go over under braking. That's a really a tricky, tricky spot on the track. Second chicane also properly taken here by myself. And yeah, it seems quite chilled. Just need a good druids now. And we will be fine. And Tommy won't be able to send it into the final corner. And that's looking quite comfortable. Yes. So we've got an easy win up front for Nicholson, even though. In the end, under the pressure of Tommy, I was able to do Nicholson's lap times. But uh, yeah, still, overall, quite impressive performance by him. And I was very happy to hold off Tommy here and to secure that second place in this race. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. 
If you did, then please make sure to hit the like button, sub to the channel if you're new here, and also go check out all the links down below. And let me know how you liked this video format in the comments down below and whether or not I should do more of these in the future instead of the traditional live commentaries. Hope to see you all again in the next video. Until then, have some good racing. Bye bye.